Appraisers, this is the new Spark. Now, for those of you who have seen Spark before, this is going to look familiar to you as the entry screen, but as we get into this, you'll see it's quite a bit different. Uh, if you're not familiar with Spark, Spark is our data importing and now trend analysis tool. So it'll load in up to 30 comps plus your subject property using a combination of both public records and MLS data. You get to choose that combination and how it fills in your sales grid. And then it also now allows you to do a robust but easily customizable trend analysis. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to load data in right into a report and then once I have that data loaded into a report you see what it can do then I'll go back and I'll show you exactly what you can do within Spark to kind of customize the analysis customize your grid uh, so let's go ahead and get started now you guys are going to use this in one of two ways. You're either going to get in and get out of Spark quickly, just use it strictly as a data importing tool, get your grid, get your 1004MC and get out. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate now. And then some of you are also going to stay in Spark for a little bit longer, maybe a few more minutes longer, and do the full trend analysis. So I'm going to show you both. First, we're going to start with just the strictly uh, data importing. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit play on this timer, pick my effective date, which is the first thing you need to do upload your file that has your comps in it that you want to load into your sales grid. Now it's pulling in the data from public records as well, combining that in the way that I chose in my settings. And I'm going to hit next. Here's my grid. Now let's say you're doing uh, an appraisal on a property that's currently pending. It's for a purchase. I can make this, which I brought from MLS. I can make that my subject property. Turns it into my subject. I've got my comps here. You can drag them around, change the order. You can also have Spark automatically order these in a certain way that you prefer. Now I've got that set. I'm going to click over to 1004MC and I'm going to load in a competing file. This would be all the files you as the appraiser deem to be competing with your subject. You'll see it says 970. That's a lot, but that's only because I did a full 10 year search going back 10 years because uh, Spark allows me to do a 10 year analysis uh, if you want to. And you don't have to, obviously. And then now I'm going to load in my neighborhood file. This part is optional. This is if you want Spark to fill out the uh, neighborhood one unit housing, low, high, and predominant price and age numbers. Now I've got that all in there. Again, it was a lot of properties, but that's because I did a 10-year uh, search for a 10-year analysis. Now I'm going to hit Next. And then you can see I've got my one unit housing, top of page two numbers, and my 1004MC. Now I'm all set, ready to go. I hit Export. Make sure my options are how I want. This tells you what you're loading into your report. You hit go. And now Spark is creating a file that it's going to save to your computer. And all you do is you open that file and it loads your data into your a la mode uh, total or win total report. So now I'm just going to open that file. And it's now loading the data in. So as soon as the data is all loaded in, that's when I'll stop the timer here. Now you can choose to merge into an open report, which is what you'll all do. And I'm just going to create a new report so you can see exactly what all Spark can put into your report. And now let's go down here. And the report is ready to go. Once it's loaded up, I'll stop the timer. There we go. OK, so now right around two minutes, you can see that's how long it took to basically load in 11 comps, a subject property, and a 1004MC, along with charts that you'll see in a second, and comments. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get this out of the way now that that part's done. And I'm going to show you the report. Now, keep in mind, as I said, this was a completely blank report. So everything you see that's put in here is put in here from Spark. Uh, OK, so let's go ahead and go through it. You see we got the low, high, uh, predominant one unit housing numbers. Um, if I had checked boxes on the 1004MC, those boxes would be checked here. Um, some improvement data is in there. We've got the comps and the subject loaded into the grid, top of page two numbers, uh, prior transfer history information with the boxes checked. And let's see what else we got here. The uh, comps four, five, and six, tra prior transfer history, seven, eight, and nine, and lastly, 10 and 11. And then you get to see the 1004MC, the comments that it put in based on the analysis you get to choose. Again, if I had chosen the checkboxes in Spark, it would have put those in as well. And then you get the charts that you selected uh, that you wanted to go into your report from your analysis. And then the last thing it's going to load in is your prior transfer history. Now, keep in mind, you get to choose how much data it loads in for your prior transfer history. So if you want to load in 36 months for your subject for prior transfer history and 12 months for your comps, which by default, that's what it does, then that's what it's going to put in. But you can customize these to be any number of months back that you want. Um, and as you can see, it loads in all the prior transfers 
prior transfers in that time frame. Not just the first, most recent, but all of them. So you get the uh, the date, the price, the grantor, grantee, what type of deed it was, and the document number, all loaded in for every transfer in that time frame. And then uh, the last thing it's going to put in is also, if necessary, it'll put in the appropriate photo pages for the comps that were loaded in if they're not already in your report. Okay, and then the work file. So this is key here. So what Spark does is it loads in a market conditions report and a property report. Now the market conditions report is related to the 1004MC or trend analysis side. So I'll click on that. And essentially this is everything that Spark gave you, um, including every single chart and every single data table of all the data that Spark analyzed for you to look at. And you'll, we'll see that in a minute when I get back into Spark. But you can see here we've got this information, the 1004MC, and then here we get into every chart, every table of data, all this analysis, it's going to go into your work file. So if you ever needed to defend yourself in the future um, and you forgot to include some information in your report, you still have it in your digital work file. And then the property report. Now the property report is for the grid side. So this is basically all the comps that were loaded in plus your subject property all on one page. And then you get a map of all those properties. And you also get basically a one page printout of every single property showing all the MLS data and all the public records data all in one place for every property. In addition, it, you can see it also has the entire uh, prior transfer history going back all the way as far as we have, and it has the entire mortgage finance history. Now, the last thing I'll point out here is that it highlights in red anytime there's a discrepancy between MLS and public records. So you can quickly glance through here, see anything in red, and say, okay, there's a GLA issue here. It says 1532 from MLS, 1494 is what public records says. So you can kind of go in and check that out if you need to once it's in your grid. Um, also, what it will put in for every property, if you choose for it to, is two little maps. So one kind of zoomed in showing you uh, the building footprint if in Google it has that where you are. And it also will highlight any primary traffic arteries in yellow. So you can quickly see if your property sides, uh, fronts or backs to a primary traffic artery. And then you get another map which is zoomed out and it's an aerial view showing a little bit more of the surrounding area. And then you can see it also does that for essentially every property that was loaded in going all the way through. Okay, now let's get into the good stuff. So let's switch back over to Spark and let's get into this analysis. So essentially, as you saw, we loaded in the 1004MC, we got the numbers, we got all these numbers, the comments, everything was loaded in. But what I like to do is I like to spend an extra two minutes, because that's all it takes really, is to get a full trend analysis based on how I want to analyze the market. And I choose my check boxes, my trends for the 1004MC and my one unit housing trends based on my analysis that I like to do in my neighborhood. So here's how it works. Essentially, you set up ahead of time. So the first time you use Spark, these are going to be your defaults. It's going to show you when you hover over, let's say, median comparable sales days on market. It's going to show you an analysis of the median days on market, doing an analysis of the past 12 months, as you can see there, that blue card up in the top left, and then the top right one is over 24 months. It's going to show you both of those. And so to help you make a decision, because that's the actual amount that it's going up per month or going down per month. So then I can make a decision. Okay, went down for the past year, but if I look at two years, it's going up. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call that stable. Now, the point is, is these three numbers don't really paint the picture of what your neighborhood is doing. And a lot of times, you can't just paint a picture based on some static analysis. You need to go in and decide how it's best to analyze your data. And so the point of Spark is you set up the analysis the way you want it to be, and then all you do is, is you hover over the checkbox when you're about to make a decision. It shows you the analysis based on how you want it to be, and you make your decision however you want that to be. And then you also have that data all in your work file as I showed you. So you can always go back and defend yourself. Now in certain situations, like this one is a great example, you got numbers that shows two, six, and eight. But look at my an analysis here. It's negative 1.6% a month for the past year, or if I look at two years, it's negative 1.3% a month uh, for the number of actives. So I'm gonna call that declining because that's what it is. Now, and that's despite this. but. As you know, the reader of your report is going to say, no, you made a mistake. It's not declining. Just look at the numbers. But you know that's not true. So all you do is you check the box as you say think you should check it. And then you click on here, and you can just come in and customize it. You say, okay, I want to throw that chart in my report 
along with the trend result. And so it's going to put this number right into this chart, and it's going to put that chart as an image right into your report. So you can just let the reader know, go check out that chart. That's where my defense is. And if you forget to and you don't put it in your report, then it's still in your digital work file, so you're good to go. Now, so that's essentially how you're meant to use Spark. You define, when you first use Spark, you take the first couple times you use it, you customize all the analysis for each of these rows, and once it's customized, every time after that, you just come in here and you check the boxes based on your analysis. It's quick and easy. I mean, literally, in one to two minutes, I can have all these boxes checked based on a full and, and if I want, rather robust analysis, including my yes-no boxes here. Concession percent, yes, yeah, 66% had seller concessions, so yes, they're prevalent. Declining, uh, you make the decision. Do you want to call that declining, stable, or increasing? But you get the idea. Uh, okay, now I'm going to show you how you go in and actually customize the analysis here. So let's say I want to customize median comparable sale price. All you do is you click on it. Now you get to come in here and customize the analysis. And by the way, when I customize the analysis, I'm also customizing my comments. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So first of all, let's say you like the analysis, but you want to do another analysis just like this but with some modifications. All you do is click clone widget. It makes another one just like it. Now um, now let's say also you like the competing analysis on sale price per square foot using median price per square foot but you want a second analysis in here which is based on instead of competing data you want it to be based on the exact same thing uh, price per square foot median but you also want it to be based on neighborhood data your broader neighborhood. Just click add analysis you flips over the card, you customize it. So what data file do you want to use? I want to use neighborhood. What type of analysis? You get to pick between all these. And by the way, these are all context sensitive. So when you're looking at sale prices, it brings up things related to price. When you're on days on market, it brings up things related to days on market. So let's go ahead and pick uh, price per square foot median. Now you can choose to change it from a scatter plot to a bar chart to a line chart. Trend line, you can choose any one of these options. I like linear for my scatter plots. And for exclude, I can also choose, let's say you want to do a an analysis to see how distressed properties are influencing your market. All you do is you remove short sales and REOs and compare that to an analysis with short sales and REOs. Um, I want to, for now, just include all the data. And you can also choose, as you can see here, to include this analysis in my comments. So it, you can see it built this sentence right here based on that analysis. I can also choose to include the lows and highs, the regression result in that comment. Uh, for now, I'll just turn that comment off. Hit go back, and I'm set. So now I've got both analyses right here. And you know what? I want to ditch this analysis, and we'll just have both of these here. And you know what? I want this to be a bar chart, so I'm going to analyze it by quarter, because obviously in a scatter plot you can't analyze things by period. It's just all the data. So I'm going to by quarter, and so I've got that. And you know what? I want a historic analysis. So let's do 120 months. So I have this analysis. It shows me my trend. And you know what? I don't like the linear trend line, so I'm going to click this to flip it over and change that linear trend line to the best fit. And now it switches to that, which is the best fit. And I hit go back. I like it. Now the last thing I want to do is I don't want this to be included in my comments, so I'm going to turn that off and just include this one over here in my comments. Now I hit go back. OK, I'm all set. Now I like this analysis. This is how I want it to be. Um, I don't want this to be included in my charts by default, so I'm going to turn that off. And then when it's all set and everything's set up how I want, I hit Save Layout. Now next time I go in to use Spark, it's going to use exactly my preferences. So then all I got to do is when I load my files into Spark, I hover over each row and I can see the trend preview which shows me the full analysis based on how I or you want to analyze the data and I can make a quick but accurate and well-supported decision. Uh, for example, the one we just customized right here, I can look at that and say, yeah, I'm going to call that stable and basically do the same thing for every row and every checkbox and what that means to you is that from start to finish from the moment you load up Spark until the moment you have all that data in your report you're only looking at around two to five minutes to do all of that and that includes the full trend analysis the comps that you're loading in with MLS and public records all the prior transfer history the subject all of it in two to five minutes now if you don't take the time to do the analysis and mark the checkboxes in Spark then you're only looking at one to two minutes and that's basically the big new feature that we are excited for you guys to try out in Spark. We hope you like it. Now, there's still a couple other things I want to show you here before I switch over to the grid and show you the cool stuff we've got going on there.
and the first is numbers. Essentially, any number that you can see is something you can click on to see the raw data behind it. So I can click on this right here, see the raw data that comprises that number. I can also click on any one of these rows, let's choose this one, and click on any point in the table. So if I want to click on that scatter plot, it will show me the entire table of data for that scatter plot, and it highlights and scrolls down to the specific data point that I clicked on. Same with the bar chart, I can click on any one of these and see the data behind that bar. I can also click on show data. It's going to show me that chart and also the table of data that supports it. So I can see the regression trends that uh, were derived from those features and that analysis. I can also see the individual period numbers here. Uh, okay, so that's that part. And then the last thing I wanted to show you were profiles. Now you can see right here, we are on the standard profile. Now what is that? Your profile, which by default you have the standard profile, is essentially the entire set of instructions you've given Spark on how to analyze the data, all the charts that are being built, how you want comments being built, um, what's going into your report as far as charts goes. Um, that's all part of your standard profile. So every time you make a change and you save it, that becomes part of your standard profile. But you might want another profile because sometimes you do those uh, uh, complex properties, a rural property maybe, where you want to have a totally different kind of analysis, but you don't want to have to customize it every time. So essentially that's what this is for. You can come in here, build a completely different profile just for those times. And you can either start one from scratch, you can clone your standard profile and use that as, a, and customize that to make another one, call it whatever you want to call it. Um, and I'll click on here and show you, this is your profile, you only have one in here when you start, but you also have a library of profiles to choose from that are built within Spark. And essentially these are profiles that I built for you to use as a jumping off point. So if you want to build a historic analysis um, for maybe a complex property that you would work on, then you can use this, click on it, and it clones this historic profile into your account, and then you can customize it to your heart's content. Okay, let's go ahead now and move on over to the grid side of things. So essentially in here, we've got a few things I want to show you. First, as you saw, you can drag comps around. Now, you saw that I loaded in the subject by just dragging it up to the subject, but let's say uh, this property, was uh, your subject wasn't actually included in your listings. Uh, it hasn't been listed before. All you do is you click Add Subject right here, and you can type in your subject information, which would be basically typing in the parcel number or address, and it's going to load that from public records right into your report. Now, let's also say that your client wants an REO addenda based on uh, some listings. Uh, so what you do is you, you take those listings that you loaded in, uh, which also you can load in another file. So let's just say you want to load in REO listings. You didn't already load any in. You click the plus button. You upload a file with your REO listings. Uh, but I already loaded them in, so I'm just going to click and drag them right up to REO listings. Now what Spark is going to do is create an REO addenda in my report with those three properties in it right there. Uh, okay, so let's see what else we can do here. Now, whoops, another thing I want to show you is settings. Now, they're really quick and easy to change. So let's say you don't like FAU. You want it to be FWA. All you do is you click heating, cooling, because that's what you want to change. Essentially, anything over here on the left that's blue is something you can click on to customize the way it's going into your report. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to change that to FWA. All you do is hit Save Changes, and then when you click Take Me Back, it brings up your grid and the changes there, and it's saved for next time. And that's how it's going to load into your report. Uh, same thing with prior transfer history and all of these. You can customize all of that. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you, which I think is fairly important and kind of cool, is the... Um, public records and MLS data. So anything that's in red, just like that work file that I showed you in, in your total report, it gives you that work file with things highlighted in red. It does the same thing on your grid in Spark. So I can hover over anything in red, and it shows me, here's the discrepancy. 1532 square feet from MLS, 1494 from public records. I just pick which one I want to load into my report, and I'm done. Now, let's say you also decided that you want to always load in this from public records rather than MLS. All you do is you click on above grade GLA, you click MLS as your data source preference and change it over to public records, hit save changes, take me back, and now Spark is always going to use public records as your data source preference for GLA. All right, everybody, that covers it for the main features of Spark. There are a lot of small things that we didn't get into, but that's for another video. If you like what you saw, go to the Alamode Total Store and get the free trial. There's a link below in the description. Give Spark a shot. I really think you guys are going to like it. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button, and you'll be notified when we release new videos. And that's it. Thanks, everybody, for taking the time to watch this.